So today we're talking about inauguration history live from Susquehanna Township High School. You're gonna have a series of social studies teachers bringing you just some information on the inauguration process. January 20th will be the 73rd inauguration that has ever been held. While it's only going to be the 46th president, each time a president is even reinstated, they are re-inaugurated. Inauguration is a process that legally makes somebody president. Unless you've been through the inauguration, even if you've been elected president, you are not the seated president yet. The first inauguration obviously was George Washington in 1789. Now, when he was inaugurated, it was actually later in the spring. Now our inaugurations are held on January 20th, and that is because of the passage of the 20th Amendment in 1933. Prior to that, the Constitution stipulated that inauguration took place on March 4th. This was supposed to give the officials of the government enough time to resume their duties after the winter holidays and bring and be able to count the electoral votes for president. But starting in the 1900s, we want to shorten that time period. Communication's gotten better. People can get places faster. So it's moved up to January 20th. This year's inauguration is going to look very different than that first inauguration. George Washington was inaugurated in New York City because that was then the seated capital of the United States. Today's inauguration takes place at the U.S. Capitol building. All right, so the planning for inauguration actually begins after the previous inauguration. So it actually is a, about a four-year planning process. Uh, one thing that's interesting is the platform that's used for the inauguration is actually built. It's originally built for each inauguration, so it's a brand new platform each time. And that building process begins, again, after the previous inauguration. Um, they practice and rehearse it, and it's very, very detailed for everything that happens. And that transition process that day is a very uh, meticulous process that takes place. In fact, the movers have about five hours or so to get the new president's uh, basically all their stuff moved into the White House over that time period. And uh, so it's a very, very quick, efficient process that has to take place. The president, the incoming president, if it's a new administration, has to appoint 4,000 new officials to the administration to run the new government. And uh, of those 4,000 officials, 1,200 of them have to be confirmed by the Senate. So there's a lot of things to do as things get started right away. Um, also, in the inauguration process, uh, there is, after, well, after the inauguration is held that night, there is an inauguration ball. And it's a big fancy dance. It's actually uh, basically organized by the incoming president's inauguration committee. And it's a, just a really big, big event. Now this year might be a little bit different with COVID-19, but traditionally it's a very large event. And in fact, Bill Clinton had the most, he actually had multiple balls. He had um, several events held over the next few days. He had a total of 14. Uh, Woodrow Wilson, on the other hand, did not want any. So it can really vary quite a bit from president to president. The inauguration and the inaugural address are meant to set the tone for the presidential term. First, Andrew Jackson had what's called an open house policy following Thomas Jefferson's kind of precedence that he set. Well, it didn't really turn out well for him. They ended up with a mob inside of the White House and Andrew Jackson got pushed up against the wall until somebody could evacuate him out and he had to leave the White House on the night of his inauguration. At Ulysses S. Grant's inauguration, it was so cold and windy that the champagne that they had brought in for the party and live canaries froze. Richard Nixon, for his inauguration, was so adamant that there would be no pigeons in the city along the parade route that he demanded they put something called roost no more in all of the trees lining the streets. It was meant that the pigeons would land on the branches and their feet would get so itchy they would fly away. <clears throat> what happened was the birds ate the roost no more and instead of having no pigeons in the cities, instead the parade went by with pigeon bodies littering the sidewalks. Also, there's blueberry jelly bean. Blueberry jelly beans, people. They didn't exist until Ronald Reagan's inauguration. When he had been governor of California, he was trying to quit smoking and instead picked up the habit of eating jelly beans. 
Blueberry is one of his favorite flavors and they wanted to honor that at his inauguration, so they wanted to have red, white, and blue jelly beans. And here we are with the blueberry jelly belly. It is customary that the President of the United States attend the inaugural address of the incoming President. However, not so long ago, Donald Trump made a statement via Twitter that he will not be attending President Joe Biden's inaugural address. Shocking. However, this is not the first time in history this occurred. Donald Trump will be the fifth president of the United States to not attend the next inaugural address, but he is the first in 152 years. The first president of the United States to not attend his successor's address was the second president of the United States, John Adams. John Adams did not attend the inaugural address of Thomas Jefferson. We're not really sure why. However, he decided to disappear from the White House at 4 a.m. on the morning of Thomas Jefferson's inauguration. Now, the saying goes, the apple doesn't far, fall too far from the tree. And that is the case because John Adams' son, Quincy Adams, was also a president who did not attend his successor's inauguration. He did not attend Andrew Jackson's inaugural address. Martin Van Buren was the third president who did not attend his successor's inaugural address, and that was the address of William Henry Harrison. And this one remains a historical puzzle. Uh, the last president 152 years ago to not attend his successor's address was Andrew Johnson. And this comes at a very political time in history, to say the least, very similar to what we are experiencing now. He did not attend the address of Ulysses S. Grant, and they had a lot of beef with each other. They didn't like each other. Andrew Jackson was called a lot of names by Ulysses S. Grant, and there's a whole story involved that you should research on your own because I think you'd find some enjoyment out of it.